Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about a very simple, free, in-home test that you can do yourself to see how your nutritional status is. That's a big question. Am I getting enough of vitamins? Am I getting enough protein? Am I getting enough minerals? What test can I do? And there are some simple tests. Today I'm going to be talking to you about your nails, so something you can visualize very easily on your own, uh, but I'm going to be doing some follow-up videos on skin and hair and other parts of your body that you can literally look at and get an idea of what's happening. Now when you go to your doctor and they look at your nails and they say, say ah, and you stick at your tongue, they're actually looking for these signs of deficiencies and imbalances and uh, I was recently studying for an exam and reviewing some of these things and I realized that a lot of people don't know that they can really start getting an indication for themselves and as I said it's it's free it's your body you just look at it and it and it tells the tale so uh, I am going to be using some unusual words and we'll put them up on the screen because they're very odd but uh, I'll also define them so you know what I'm talking about so the first one is called spoon nails. And uh, I've got my nose, so I'm gonna stick them in my pocket for a second. But um, when you look at your nail, it's kind of convex, right? It's almost the opposite of a spoon. So a spoon would be, you know, this way. Uh, so sometimes if you look at people's nails, instead of bowing outward, it literally looks like a spoon, such that you could pour a few drops of water in it and it would sit there. So spoon nails are called colonichia and they show a deficiency in copper and zinc as well as iron and protein. So if you uh, see them on yourself or you see them on someone you know, they, they definitely look different because they spoon inward. And um, you know, it's, it's definitely not your, your standard looking nail, but most people don't understand that it means something. Uh, so the next one I wanna talk to you about is called Bose Lines, like a, like a bow or a boyfriend, um, B-E-A-U. And um, with Bose lines, what it looks like is actually uh, bumps in the road, right? So you sort of fall into a bump. And this is going horizontally across the nail. So it's, it's moving horizontally, not lengthwise, and it's literally a bump. It's not a, a complete spoon uh, because it's not that deep and, and broad. It doesn't take up the whole nail, but it's ridges going up and down uh, into the nail. And that's indicative of uh, calcium deficiency as well as zinc. And you'll, you'll hear zinc comes up a lot uh, with nail disorders. Uh, the next one is called onychorexis, so I'll say that again, onychorexis, that's the, more that's the correct pronunciation, and what onychorexis looks like is these are looking at your nail lengthwise and uh, you'll see ridges, so lengthwise thin lines and ridges that you can almost feel on your nail, um, as well as uh, brittle nails that, that break easily. So with um, onychorexis, you have uh, also a protein problem, uh, not enough iron and or folic acid. So those are the three issues you look for with those. And um, you know, once again, looking at your nails, you'll look at them in a, in a new light <laughs> to get some insight onto what they mean. Uh, but it's absolutely something that uh, we've known about as far as um, the nails demonstrating uh, deficiencies for quite some time. Uh, the next one is called um, median nail dystrophy. This one's pretty dramatic, almost like those spoon nails. And once again, you're looking lengthwise and you're looking a, at a line down, down the middle. So median means in the middle. And it just looks like the nail is, is almost disintegrating. It's, there's a, there's a, a, a line through it, it bows inward, and it just looks like the nail is kind of decaying. Um, I mostly see it in people who uh, have terrible diets uh, because it is associated with um, malnutrition and um, smokers, you know, because they're, they're not absorbing their nutrients, alcoholics, um, but it's, it's pretty dramatic. But if you see it in someone you know, uh, it's good to, you know, give them a heads up that they're really malnourished, even though they might be eating food, uh, they're, not, they're not absorbing it. And uh, the last one I wanted to talk to you about is called leukonychia. And there's two types of leukonychia. One are the white dots that you can see on people's nails. And they're very just small white dots. And you can just have one on a nail or you can have several. And that's associated with a zinc deficiency. 
And the other kind of leukonychia is uh, actually white lines going across the nail. And they're just bright white, just like the, the spots are bright white. And uh, they're not perfectly, it's not a perfect line, it's a little bit of a, a variegated line, but it is going horizontally across the nail. And that's associated with um, a selenium deficiency. And if you, um, in a fun, fact about selenium is you can eat one Brazil nut a day and uh, eating one Brazil nut a day should handle uh, a selenium deficiency. So that's pretty easy. I throw one in my smoothie every morning. My smoothie is getting more and more interesting uh, these days. I've got chia seeds and now I throw in a Brazil nut. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so the selenium is not that hard to, to handle uh, with one Brazil nut. So not, not uh, certainly an expensive way to get your selenium. And so what I wanted to go over next was kind of how, what foods are rich in these nutrients. So you can see, once you've looked at your nails and, and made a diagnosis, you can see, am I missing some of these things in my diet? Now if you say, no, I'm really not. I'm, I should not be having um, a zinc deficiency because I, see, I feel like I'm eating enough of those foods. Then we want to look at absorption. Why aren't you absorbing that nutrient? And that's when we get into the health of the gut, et cetera. So, but I wanted to give you some of the foods. So, as far as calcium rich foods, not milk, remember. Milk might have calcium, but it's not an absorbable form of calcium. Uh, dairy products uh, create a very acidic environment, which is not a good environment to absorb your calcium. So instead we have sesame seeds, almonds, beans, dark green leafy vegetables are excellent. Uh, sunflower seeds, these are a good source of calcium. Uh, as far as iron, definitely we have red meat is a good source of iron and certain animal products, but if you're not really uh, into eating animal products, then other alternatives are a lot of different nuts are high in iron. Walnuts, cashews, pecans, almonds, so any nut that you like is probably in that category as well as peanut butter. So uh, although peanuts are a legume, we definitely call them a nut. Um, molasses is very high in iron as well as um, dried peas and beans so you can you know buy dried peas or beans and cook them up and, and get a nice source of iron that way. So we come to zinc. Now zinc is definitely a mineral that's very commonly deficient in our country and they talk about topsoil erosion uh, and not getting enough of our minerals that way uh, but, but zinc is, is an important one and, and you'll notice a lot of those nail types I talked about a zinc deficiency was associated with it even more so in pregnant women they need to make sure they get enough zinc as well as those of us who eat a lot of uh, vegetables and beans need higher amounts of zinc because when you eat a lot of vegetables you tend to kind of um, compete with zinc so you need more to, to counteract that so vegetarians uh, need more zinc than someone who's not a vegetarian so uh, meat and poultry are a good way to get your zinc if you're not a vegetarian if you are a vegetarian whole grains pumpkin seeds uh, sesame seeds uh, beans azuki beans bran um, and then uh, that's, that's kind of the list on that and supplementation because we find that, as I said, a lot of people are deficient regardless of whether they're vegetarians or not. And um, not so much as an advertisement, but just to give you an idea of, of a lozenge, uh, this is something that uh, we prescribe for people who are deficient. It's got 46 uh, milligrams I'm sorry, of elemental zinc, it's got 15 milligrams, and you want to get about 40 per day of zinc, and as I said, uh, a bit more, maybe up to 55, 60 if you're a vegetarian. And these kind of, this is a lozenge that I just showed you, so you can just suck on it. It's very easy to just get a little bump in your zinc that way and uh, know that you're getting enough, and then also look at your nails. That will tell the tale. And as I mentioned with selenium, your Brazil nut, also sunflower seeds and eggs and meat are all good sources of selenium as well. So I hope that was helpful for you. And as I said, I'm gonna do another section on, on hair and skin so you can really get an idea of what your body is telling you. Um, because there, it's, there's not really perfect tests on mineral levels. They, they, they're usually pretty 
they have to be pretty dramatically low to show up on, on lab tests, but early indications of how your skin feels and how your nails look will, will kind of tell you earlier. So uh, use this, look at your friends, start looking at nails and uh, see what it's uh, telling you about it. And once again, if you feel like you're, you're ingesting enough of these uh, minerals and, and um, vitamins, but you're not it, your nails still show it, then we're into a malabsorption issue. And if you're wondering what to do about that, then give me a call, write me, and um, we'll set up a free health analysis or something for you to, to get more to the root cause. Because that's ultimately, we want to use the nails as a tool to really improve health. So until next time, I wish you very good health. Send me your questions. I do love to hear from you.